A lot of people hate Zaza Pachulia, but Spurs fans have the biggest beef. Zaza single-handedly ruined their franchise. After this dirty play, Kawhi Leonard played nine total games for San Antonio before demanding a trade for injury mismanagement. Zaza is an evil man. But hold up. How could a player everyone hates be second in the all-star fan vote behind only Kevin Durant. How could an evil man give this post-game interview? So as I talk about pulling it all in at the end there. Nothing easy, nothing easy. We're going to game seven, baby. Game seven, game seven. Look, Zaza Pachulia is a little more complicated than his dirty plays, but where did he go? One minute he's winning back-to-back -back titles in Golden State, then nothing. This video explains how Zaza lasted 16 seasons in the league, what happened to him in the end, but ultimately, should Zaza have even been allowed to play in the NBA? Hey, it's Casey. Welcome to AM Hoops. Hit subscribe and notification bells. We are pushing for 100,000 subs by the beginning of 2021. So today is another Feature Friday, and this one's about Zaza Pachulia. Uh, we're going to put out polls uh, during the week, the beginning of the week, to see who you guys want to hear about. Um, every Friday, we're going to dive deep into someone's story. If you've missed previous Feature Fridays, I'm going to put a link to another video I really love at the the end of this one. So basketball saved Zaza's family. He grew up in Eastern Europe and started playing hoops at eight years old. His dad wanted a wrestler, but his mom played for the Soviet Union women's basketball team, so they got a bit of both. By 13 years old, he was already six foot eight, and the Turkish national team recruited him as a dual citizen. It was a paid spot on that team, but Zaza hesitated. He would have to leave his country, his friends, and his family. Then about one year later, his dad suddenly died during a routine doctor's visit. The choice to join the Turkish national team was smart, because now at 14 years old, Zaza was providing for the family along with his mom. He played well enough to get scouted by the Orlando Magic, who drafted him in the mid-second round in 2003. Yes, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and Zaza. He fit right in. He became an NBA rookie at 19 years old, and Zaza's sense of timing was perfect. Now, I know that seems ridiculous because he's one of the most clumsy, borderline reckless players ever, but the era at which he became a pro player was perfect for him. It was clear immediately what his role would be, an enforcer. Tough guys were still a thing in 2003. The league was still physical enough and didn't give guys a flagrant foul for grazing someone's lip. Flopping wasn't fashionable, and instead of hold me back fights, players were going into the stands and punching fans. Ah yes, back in the day. So Zaza had a place in the league from day one. This dude might as well have been from Philly or Detroit. A tough, physical, old school type player. The problem was the league started to change and Zaza was a big reason why. After the malice in the palace that we talked about where Ron Artest punched a fan, the NBA was concerned about a violent reputation. At the same time, individual players were selling the game. Michael Jordan started a commercial revolution that Shaq and Kobe continued. The NBA didn't want their stars getting taken out. By now, rules have changed like eliminating the hand check or making it illegal to undercut three-point shooters like Zaza did to Kawhi. Before that incident though, Zaza had a reputation. From his early days on the Bucks, he dove for loose balls with a little extra at the end. Check out this subtle kick to the face of Danny Green. He tried to trip Udonis Haslam. He flat out fought Jason Richardson. Then there's all the Russell Westbrook stuff. He slammed Russ and stood over him. Then he fell onto Russ accidentally. Now Zaza claims that was an accident and that his own teammate pulled him down, but that's hard to believe. After the Kawhi ankle injury, Greg Popovich had enough. It's dangerous. It's unsportsmanlike, and this particular individual has a history with that kind of action. And we're up 23 points in the third quarter against Golden State, and Kawhi goes down like that. 
and you want to know if our chances are less, and you want to know how we feel, that's how we feel. It's obvious that Zaza Pachulia was a dirty player. I don't care that he was like a good dude or a good teammate. He was a dirty player. He tried to hurt other pros. But the one incident that he fessed up to, the one out of like a million, was a different one involving Kawhi. There's one thing I regret in my career where when I was in Dallas, I fought for frustration, you know, we kind of, it was loose ball, we go for the ball and I hold his arm and uh, no excuse, right? And I, I admit it, it, it was a wrong play by me. This is only one thing I regret in my career. We all make mistakes. I mean, you know, you make mistakes on the court, you make mistakes off the court. Uh, again, you admit it, you think about it yourself, you know what, that wasn't right, move on. If Zaza doesn't seem like a tough guy in that interview, by the way, it's because he's not in real life. After the second Kawhi incident, Zaza texted Kawhi and apologized, saying it really wasn't intentional. Lots of guys call him their favorite teammate ever. He's a dad of three and met his wife Tika in 2007 while she was dancing for the Georgian Ballet. He didn't last so long in the league just because he set good screens or played dirty and got away with it. It's because he was a great player in the locker room. That is the confusing paradox of Zaza Pachulia. Yet, he was a dirty player in a time that enforcers were being phased out. He would never last in the NBA today. They changed rules for him in the end. But love him or hate him, Zaza played that way because he had to. From an early age, he was forced into being the man for a big family. If he didn't do what he had to do, basketball wouldn't have been an option. So yeah, there was a place in the league for Zaza Pachulia being dirty. It was on the NBA to get rid of players like him, not on him to get rid of himself. He was just trying to feed his family. Zaza retired at 34 years old after 16 seasons. That is unreal in a league with an average career length of five seasons for a guy who averaged seven points and six boards a game. He is now a consultant for the Golden State Warriors for basketball and for business. Zaza is actually one of the more underrated businessmen in the league. He lost over $100,000 in two restaurants during his first few pro years. That taught him valuable lessons about investing his money. Now he's a hands-on owner in real estate and tourism in Georgia. He's even taken classes at Harvard Business School. And the fact that the Warriors hired him for business says a lot. After his hoops career, Zaza is also involved in basketball academies he set up in his home country. He coaches two-hour practices for kids and teaches an English class. He has said, quote, my goal is to have pros and to raise good basketball players that are going to help the country play for the national team and have amazing careers either in Europe or here in the United States. Hopefully that day is going to come. So that is the complicated legacy of Zaza Pachulia. On one hand, yes, a dirty player who tried to and sometimes succeeded in hurting guys and in other ways, a great teammate and a great person. One thing no one argues though, is that he overcame the odds for a championship career for almost two decades. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.